Welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. My name is Jesus Ramirez and I am part of the technical staff of Austin Engineering. Today, uh, we are here to talk a little bit about ANSI size pack ADT, ANSI's electronic desktop ice pack, right? And specifically to start talking about modeling complex geometries, some tips, some tricks, some strategies, and how we deal with complex geometries from the CAD generation, CAD preparation, mesh generation, and solving. Uh, this is an extensive topic, so the information uh, it has been split into, into different parts. Today, I will show you the first part, the second that correspond to geometry generation and geometry preparation. The second part that correspond to meshing complex geometries and some strategies that we have available in, in ANSI SizePack ADT will be published uh, through our YouTube channel in two weeks. So in two weeks you can you can you can watch the second part of this of this webinar. And after that, two weeks later, you will see that the the last part or the third part that correspond to solving strategies for complex geometries. We, with that, we will finish our series on ANSI size plus ADT for modeling complex geometries. So we are Austin Engineering. We are an elite channel partner of ANSYS, and we, we are experts in, in simulation and not only on CFD, we, we are experts in the structural, thermal, for sure fluids and, and also the magnetic fields, right? We, we offer, uh, you know, customer uh, best in class software tools, consulting for engineering projects, training for learning how to, to use the, the ANSYS tools. We do mentorship and for sure we do technical support for ANSYS tools. So let's start with, with this webinar. Let's talk, just uh, give a brief introduction of what is ISPAC ADT. And let's talk about some of the its capabilities, right? So we can say that ANSI SizePack is a, is a software tool that provides thermal analysis capabilities for electronic and mechanical systems, right? And basically, if we have an electronic system, we have a mechanical system where we have heat transfer, right? And we want to do thermal management. So ISPAC is one of the tools that we may want to, to use for doing this analysis, right? It, it is important to to, to remember for those that knows the tool and for those that are new that IcePack uh, has two versions, right? We, we, we have the IcePack Classic, that is the, the, like the old one, that the most known IcePack uh, version. But right now, ANSI has developed a new version that, uh, you know, his, the intention is to have a, a easier communication with the electromagnetic the, uh, tools that we have in, inside ICE. ANSYS, right? So this new version is what we call ISPAC ADT, right? And basically we have a, a wider range of capabilities for dealing, uh, you know, for electrothermal modeling, right? So basically being said that, we can we can say that also uh, this ANSYS ISPAC can give us uh, or help us to, to generate accurate and comprehensive 3D thermal analysis for electronic components and also for a system components, right? Then we can go from from the from an, analyzing the the thermal the thermal behavior of, of a, a small component or electronic component, but we can also do analysis for syst complete systems, right? Being said, we can do also analysis of data centers in in IcePack. We can do also uh, steady state and transient uh, simulations, right? Then we can include thermal cycling and thermal stresses analysis, right? And we can easily integrate with other ANSYS tools. Uh, for any of, the, I mean, electrical, mechanical, or electromagnetic analysis, right? So it's a, it's, a, it's a tool that is based on Fluent Solver, that is a CFD tool. And you can see, right, then in this case, this is just an example of the kind of visualization that we can get from IcePad. Then we have here our board, we have the components, we have some heat sinks here, we have some fans, and we can see the heat, the the streamlines that are are you know predicted by the solver, and we can do uh, you know 
know what is the the region of 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 high temperature or hot spots we we can know what are the regions of of low temperatures and we can also do optimization of this is seeing how many fins do we need what is the the velocity and and or the best fans that we or blowers that we can we should use for doing electronic cooling right so basically it's a tool that is intended to to help engineers in thermal management right let's keep talking about the capabilities of for, for ice pack and we can say that ANSYS ice pack offers uh, a wide range of capabilities for thermal analysis that includes as i mentioned uh, uh in the last slide it, it, this is important, right? Because we can do a steady state and transfer thermal analysis, right? We can perform both, and we can, for both cases, we can predict temperature distribution, heat fluxes, uh, uh, air air velocities, or any other, uh, you know, property or variable parameter that we may be interested for our uh, cooling application. Uh, be, uh, being said that, uh, IcePack can easily solve conjugate heat transfer models, right? And we can we can handle conduction, we can handle convection, and in convection we can handle natural and forced convection. That's something that we can do, and also we can include radiation models, right? So even from radiation that goes surface to surface, and also when it includes uh, participating media, right? Then this is something that we we can do easily with the with the tool. Right, and that is very helpful for electronic cooling. Right, we we have models for heat sinks and and fan. Right, so we can uh, bring like libraries with real data, but also we can change the the heat and the fans operating conditions or or condi or characteristic for optimization purposes. Right, but then we can do easily optimization using this tool. We don't need to spend too much time building a geometry for a heat sink or maybe changing the operating condition for a fan because these are, are primitive models that are already included into IcePack. Uh, one of the main applications that we, we have in IcePack is PCB modeling, right? Printed, printed circuit boards. And basically, ANSYS IcePack can model uh, PCBs and we can analyze the thermal behavior of the components mounted on them and we can recognize uh, the hot spots and do failure analysis to see if, if the temperatures are below or are higher than our maximum value, right? So this is something that we can do and is, is one of the most common applications. We have a, an extensive library of material properties, but if if for in if in any case we don't have uh, the, the the material is not included into the into the ice pack libraries we can create new new materials that's something that we can do then the, the support is flexible uh, about it and basically in the end we can say that this this version of ice pack ADT is 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 is, is capable uh, you know is able to to perform multiphysics simulation as well. Uh, it means that we can simulate the interaction, for example, of different physical phenomena such as thermal, electromagnetics, and me mechanical effects, right? And for doing that, the ANSYS electronic desktop is a very good alternative now. It, it makes our job easier, right, for, for doing the link between the different physics, right? So basically, we can combine thermal analysis with electromagnetic analysis and mechanical simulations all in, in, in the same plat platform right and shared results and getting real uh, data in real time for each of the physics. So this is interesting. This is something that we we did manually in the past, but with, with this new version of IcePack in the ANSYS electronic desktop is easier. And that's the reason we we want to show you this, this IcePack in this suite, right? So let's look and remember, and, and let me remember some of the best practices for for doing modeling processes, right? For CFD and specifically for ANSYS IcePack, right? So this maybe can be known for some of you, maybe maybe it's new for others. This is like a workflow, a recommended workflow that we follow to try to, to get, to guarantee accuracy on our results, right? So remember the first step always is to start with the geometry creation. We, we want to have a geometry that represents the, the system that we want to analyze, but at the same time, we want to, to avoid to have like uh, dirt geometries. We want to avoid uh, small details that 
doesn't affect the physics, or we want to have uh, avoid like printed letters or logos into the geometry or features that are not required, right? So geometry creation is an art because we want to we want to balance right simplicity in the geometry with accuracy in the results, right? So it's important to to know which what is the the, the trade off between simplicity and and accuracy, right? So it, it is important to 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 generate a correct geometry, right? After that, once we have the geometry, then we can start assigning material properties, and this is very important for electronic coolings, right? Most many of the of the properties of these components are temperature dependent, right? So sometimes when we have we want to create like the first model, the simple model, uh, we can start using constant constant values, right? And that's okay for for a very first approach, just to have the baseline model. But when we want we want to move forward in this kind of application and have more accurate results, then we want to include temperature dependency of the of the material of the pro, of the material properties, right? And this is something that ANSI size pack handles pretty well. But again, if we don't if we don't have for some reason the we don't we don't find the material in our libraries, we can create uh, the the material properties, right? So this is this. A step here is, is very, very important because basically this will affect directly how the, the thermal behavior um, is predicted, right? Once we have that, then this this is a, the most important step for, for me is, is having a good mesh, right? Then if we can have a very good geometry, we can have the, the correct properties, even we can have good boundary conditions, but if our mesh is not good enough, probably our accuracy uh, won't be good, right? So for simple models, you will see in the next slides that ANSI size pack offers a very simple tool for doing the mesh, right? And in most of the case, we don't need to worry about uh, generate the mesh because the software does it for us pretty well for simple geometries. But the, when the geometry is complex, when it have uh, a small features, when it's dirty, when the, the packages, the components are not aligned or where they are not like, simple shapes, then doing the meshing requires some expertise and some knowledge of what to do to get the best mesh that I can with always keeping in mind that we shouldn't have like a high number of cells because if if so, if we if we have a high number, for sure the simulation time will will increase too much. So we don't we want to have a good mesh, but trying to keep the the number of cells uh low after that then for sure we will we will have our to define our boundary conditions this is a a common step in in all simulations we will solve the the model right then for doing this we have different methods and i i am not going to talk about this and then we will post process the results and we will extract the the information from the model we will post process it based on what we want to see what we want to analyze and basically this is very important because all of this job, right, was for getting these results, right? And if we don't know how to post-process the result, or if we are not sure, or we, I mean, if we, if we, if we don't have clarity in the main goal of the model, then probably we will miss some information in this part here. And once we have this, if, if we have it, uh, if we do this well, so probably we can say, okay, this is, what I did, this is what I got, these are my results, my result looks good or doesn't look good. And I can say, okay, I will stop here. Or we can go on a step further and say, okay, it's now time to iterate and improve. I can improve my model because maybe my model was too simple, avoid many of the physics involved. And now I, I, I want to have a, a, an, a, an improved model. So I need to to change some some things or to create to, to create more accurate a more accurate setup in one of these steps, or I can start to iterate if I am happy with the model, the complexity and the accuracy of the model I got. So I can start to iterate for uh, analyzing, for example, different design uh, operating uh, design points, operating conditions, or maybe do start doing some small changes or changes to the geometries, or in in the case of a or the heat sink, right, to try to to get the better the better solution, right? And after this, even if we want to 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 move forward and we want to 
to have like a, a, a very the best solution we can we can translate or we can put a, an additional step here and we can do an optimization uh, study right and we can do optimization also in in icebat so I mean this is this is a, a workflow that we may want to follow and basically it's like a it's, it's not mandatory right but it's recommended that we follow these steps at least for for having warranted that we 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 I mean we can expect some good results in the end. Okay, now let's let's talk about some best practices for setting up and simplify complex geometries, right? Then this is related. This first part is related to the geometry creation and geometry preparation, right? Remember, this is the goal for this the first part of the webinar, right? So today we are going to talk about geometry creation and geometry preparation for ice pack. Okay, so let's talk about complex geometries. Right, basically, when we when we think in, uh, on using ice pack, one of the things that or the first things that comes to to our mind is okay, we can start building blocks, right, and we will try to keep it simple uh, into the model. So our shapes will be blocks, cylinders, or any simple geometrical geometrical shape, right. That's what we would like, but in reality, that's not true. Our components doesn't have these simple shapes. They have more complex shape. For example, this fan here, right? And this is probably the fan that we will get from a designer, right? Or from a vendor. This is the cat they will share with us, right? Then we have the blades, we have the hub, we have the case, we have some holes, we have some, some details here, right? And I mean, we, we can use this geometry for creating a fluid domain for CFD purposes, but the geometry is complex, right? And, and, the, and the idea of ice pack is to simplify as possible the models in order to make the solution faster, but without losing accuracy in the, in the solution, right? So we assume that we, as we receive this geometry. This can be a step file or any other CAD format. And most of the times, based on our experience, when we receive the CAD from from designers or from vendors, these cuts are not are not built for CFD purposes. They are built for other purposes, so they 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 are not clean. So they are the we can find in the sub edges. We can find this kind of shallow depressions. We can find holes, right? And many other small details that we should avoid for having like a a good CFD CAD or, or a CAD for CFD purposes, right? So we need to start to think, okay, how I'm going to clean this, how I'm going to simplify this without losing accuracy, right? Then this is a very, very simple geometry, just a fan, but that shows many of the problems that we, we can we can find when we are dealing with geometries that are not like simple shapes, right? So when we receive this this kind of geometries, we have two options for for working with them in Iceberg. The, the first one is taking this uh, in our in one of the our CAD tools. In this case, I am going to focus on a space claim, right? And we can prepare and clean the geometry in a space claim. We can do that, right? And I will show you some some examples on how to do it. But also, we can use one of the one of the capabilities that we have now in Icepack ADT to try to heal the model, to, to try to heal the, 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 the dirty cat, right? So basically, if, if we find a problem with one of the objects that we are importing in our Icepack session, right? So we can, we can do a model analysis. Basically for, let me, let me show you the, the the path that we should follow inside Icepack for doing that one. If you are in Icepack, you can go to the Modeler tab, go to Model Analysis, and anal analyze the object. Once you do that, basically what you will find is that, for example, here this fan has some some errors, some some problems, and you can see it here uh, in the status that. It will show you like invalid entities found, right? Basically, the software is telling you, hey, you know, you imported some cats here, but that cat is not good enough for, for doing the analysis. Then you should take care of this geometry, right? Then again, we can do this in two ways. We can 
clean and prepare the geometry in the I and in a space clean, or we can try to do it inside ice pack. And for doing that, what we can do is basically go to the analysis option, right? Turn on the the perform entity check errors uh, analysis, right? And here, let me go here. In this option, we will tell the software, hey, you know, I know that there is an invalid entity, that there are some problems with the geometry. So maybe you can you you may want to try to heal it, right? Then we will tell the software, hey, try to heal, try to repair the, the geometry for us, right? Then we will select this option heal, heal objects, right? And there are different ways for, for doing the healing, but recommendation is start doing it with auto heal, right? Click OK. And in most of the cases, the software will be uh, able to fix the problems. And now once we do the healing, you can see that the status changed from invalid to good. It means that now all our or our geometries are good for simulation purposes. And you can see this is very straightforward, it's very simple, right? We don't need to do any any change, a manual change into the into the geometry. The software may be able to do it for us, right? And this is one of the new things that we have in AEDT. Basically, we can try to, to heal and to improve complex geometries directly into the software without with a minor manual job, right? This is one of the options, right? However, or sometimes the geometry is more comp is more complex, right? And maybe we want to do a preparation before coming into the ice pack, right? So let's assume this: we have this set of these systems, right? We have components, we have some heat sinks, and we have other. Uh, we have a fan here, and we have. Uh, a heat sink in this part, right? And we want to bring this model to ice pack, right? This model we receive, we be, it may be that we build it or we receive it from designers or from a vendor or from a supplier. I mean, we can, we can, we can get this, this file from, from different sources, right? Then this is what we call MCAT, right? Mechanical CAT. We we do this differentiation in IcePad because in IcePad we also import uh, electrical or electronics CAT, right? What we call ECAT. So let's focus right now in this part of the of the of the webinar uh, on the MCAT, right? The, the mechanical CAT. And as you may know, we can we can import a step I just creo uh, Auto that AutoCAD, Parasolid, CATIA, SolidWorks, right? Any 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 format that is available, we can most of them we can we can handle it in our in what in our ice pack tools. In this case, this is a space claim, right? Then we will import it. And what we will see is that these these guys here are dirty, and we may want to do a simplification be, before moving into ice pack, right? So let me show you. For example. For the fan, right? Then we have the fan here, and this is an example. We have the, uh, our fan, we have our blades, right? We have the hub, we have the case, and we 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 can import this into the ice pack, and even we can handle this with a multiple reference frame, but it will require a lot of uh, computational resources to solve it. So ice pack can simplify this real fan geometry into a simple fan model, right? And basically what we do, and we can do this inside ice pack, and we can do also this inside space claim, is we select the, the, the hub surface, we select the outer case surface, and we will take ice pack or, or space claim, hey, you know, I want to model this as a fan in ice pack. So when we select that, immediately this geometry which will be converted to something like this. Right here, there are some numerical sources, right? Momentum sources that will uh, resemble or replicate the fan effect over the airflow, right? So we can now have a fan model, a simplified version based on a, on a real geometry, right? And this is in, in important and we want to do this because we want to keep accuracy, but somehow we don't want to, to to increase the mesh size. So it's much easy, it's easier 
to, to create a, a good mesh in this geometry than in this, because the, here there are small details that may increase or might require small cells near the edges or near the, these faces or curvatures, right? And for doing that, we need to have more cells into the cells, right? Then into the mesh. So basically, this is something something that we we may want to do, right? I know that sometimes we 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 think that if we try to keep the geometry as it is, it will be better, but it, it is not all the times, right? Because sometimes this 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 complex geometries uh, you know lead to to bad quality meshes, right? So this is like the, the first step, right? If we have a, a fan, right? Like a standard fan, we have the, the characteristic curve, uh, we have the information, then we, we may want to simplify it to one of the fan, of the fan models that we have in, in IcePack, and we can include all that information in, in the setup, right? Let's see what happened with openings, right? So now we have the, we have our, our enclosure, Right then here you can see there are some fins and right here we have like this uh, perforate plate, right? Then here there are some holes. So what we, the first thing we need to do is to, to let ice pack know that here we will have uh, openings, right? Then here these holes can be treated as openings, right? So we can do that again inside ice pack or space claim. And we will take this over. Hey, you know, I have a, a perforate plate, but I want to to model this these holes as openings, right? So we can do that. That, that would be like the the basic simplification that we should do, and that I will show you in the later in the presentation uh, in the in the in the in the demo how we can do this, right? But but we can go further on the simplification, and we can tell. Hey, you know, we have this perforated grill. We have some holes. And you know what? Maybe I don't want to keep la, the openings like this because this this will require a small cells, which uh, lead to a, a a higher number of cells in my mesh. So what I want you to do, ice pack, is that you model this surface as a grill. And a grill basically is a continuous phase for for the eye, but that um, behave as a as a screen as a perforated uh, media, right? So for meshing purposes, this is a continuous surface, but for physical, we are accounting inside the model for these holes here. So we can go from this to this, we'll have, you know, uh, the, the behavior of these holes will be modeled into, into the grill, but for meshing purposes, it will be easier to build a mesh with less cells account. So this is the kind of simplification that we we sometimes forget when we have these real geometries, and that we should do to get a you know to a, a simpler a simpler geometry for for simulation purposes. Let's keep moving, and I, I I like this, and this is what happens when we have heat sinks, right? Then in this case, this is our heat sink. You can see that it's not like a simple geometry. I mean, this is this is it's a, it's extruded in this direction, but the shape is not simple, right? So when we have this from in our CAD, we can say, okay, I want to move to ice pack, and I want to simplify this. I I have I simplify the fan, I simplify the 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 openings, and I want to simplify the heat sink. Okay, here I have three different alternatives. I can do a bounding box simplification. I can do a primitive fit simplification, or I can do a polygonal fit simplification. As you may see, depending on the uh, approach that I take, the, the final shape will be different, right? So for example, in the bounding box, what happened is that basically from this heat sink, a bounding box will, will be created, and we are losing all the details of this heat, heat sink. We're losing it. If we use the primitive fit, basically what is going to happen is that the, the geometry will be splitted, right, in, in multiple blocks. So the, the final shape is somehow similar, but we will have many, many, many interfaces and many blocks. It, it's, it's not the perfect approach, but it's good. We can do it, right? 
And also we have the polygonal fit where there is a simplification, a small simplification to translate this to from an, a, an, a traditional or a standard MCAT to a, an iceback object. And basically, if you see this, if you see here, um, the, the, the final shape is basically the same that the original one. So as possible, we may want to, to use the polygonal fit right here when it's possible, right? And we can, we will learn this, and you will learn this once you are using the tool. You you may want to 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 know better when when to use this one or when to use this one, right? It will depend also in, in the in the in the shape, right, uh, of the original geometry. So when we are doing this kind of simplifications, we we have three options, right? Bonding box, primitive fit, and polygonal fit. And all of them have uh, different uh, options as, uh, and yeah, like properties, right? For example, once you do the, the simplification, what is going to happen is that you will rewrite or the, uh, the object the, over the original one. So you will lose the original uh, cat. If you don't want to do that, so basically, you may want to have this uh, option enabled. So you want to create a clone of the original object before the operation. So if any case that you want to go back to the original cat, you will have it available into the session, right? If not, then you will lose it, right? You can do uh, you can use different uh, approaches. For example, this is the the, the most interesting. Uh, let's say for the polygonal polygonal fit option that is the one that replicates the, the the geometry pretty well so you can see that we have this uh region here that is called extrusion axis right and by default it's in auto but you should be aware of using of uh, or knowing what is the main direction of extrusion right in this case uh, let's assume that this direction is x coordinate right so for having like uh, almost a perfect match on the on the simplification with the polygonal fit. You should be aware of selecting the x coordinate in the structure axis because if not, then you probably will have as a, a simplification in the even when polygonal fit similar to the primitive fit because this simplification depends on the on the main axis of of extrusion or or yeah or building the where where the heat sink was built or the geometry was built. Okay, let's move forward and see what happened when we when I want to import the the MCAT into a space claim. So I can do this in two different ways. I can open a space a space claim file, right? Uh, that is a, one of the CAT tools from ANSYS just by browsing uh, the, the file. So uh, I will go to the modeler, the space clean link, browse, and I will look for the for the CAT file, right? And that's easy. That's the, the way we, 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 we did it in the past. And most of the time we, we do it like that before knowing this new option that I will present to you just right now. The other way for doing it is to use the connect to active session tool that we have available in icepad ADT just right now. So what's happened is that I can connect icepad to a space claim. And it means that if the geometry is modified in a space claim, icepad immediately will see that change and that modification. So it's like a real time um, a real time link. So for doing that is basically click in connect to after session, right? And once we do that, the software will show us, hey, you know, you have this a, a, a space claim session open. You can see this is a space claim session open that now is not connected. Do you want to connect it? I mean, do you want to connect your icepad with a space claim? If you click in connect, immediately icepad and space claim will be connected. And basically, what is going to happen is that you can modify your geometry in a space claim 
you can prepare the geometry and space claim, and you will see those changes into the iceberg, right? And basically, this is interesting because we have a direct link from the CAD to the iceberg. Our CAD tool for sure will, will have more capabilities that iceberg, iceberg a simulation tool, not a, a, a CAD tool. So it is nice, right? Because now you can modify, you can change any, any geometry parameter in the space plane, and you can see it directly in the, into the iceberg without rebuilding the whole setup. Okay, so before going into the live demo, before going into the live demo, I, I will summarize some of the, of the integration steps that we need to do. Remember, if you are going to, to clean the, the geometry using the space claim, so spring clay should be open, should be the same version and release that the icebox uh, tool that you're using, right? Our recommendation is that you review and organize the components in parts or, or as assemblies because these parts and assemblies will be bring into the icebox, so it will be easier for you to handle the model. Remember to clean up the components by deleting in unnecessary features and parts. Uh, also remember to do the simplification of complex components. You can split them into multiple boxes if, if needed. Remember, and I will show this into, into, the, into the, the demo, uh, identify the icepack objects and also simplify the objects to be icepack uh, primitive when, when possible, right? This is not mandatory, but it's recommended for modeling goals. And basically, if you follow these steps, and basically, if you follow the, the step that I will show you in, in the demo, you, 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 you have a, a high probability that your model uh, will be accurate and you, will, you, you succeed for doing the model, right? Today, remember, we, we are focusing on building geometry, right? But in the part two that will be published for those that arrive late today, for the second part that is corresponding to the mesh process will be published in the, our YouTube channels uh, in two weeks. And after that, two weeks later, we, we will publish the third part that correspond to solving complex geometries, right? So let me unshare momentarily my screen to move to the to the to the demo and I will share it with you just in a minute. Perfect. So we are here now and I want to show you how to use space claim to prepare the geometry for, for ice pack. So I uploaded already uh, an step file, right? That has multiple bodies. So initially what I am going to do here is to try to fix the geometry. So you can see that there are different components. So let me click here and expand all. And we can see that we have uh, cases that are of, let's say, from the same family. So what I'm going to do is to put all of them together. So I'm going to select all cases, to the two cases. So right click and move to a new component, right? And I'm going to call that casing, right? Basically, also, I'm going to select all the HP, right, parts. And I'm going to move it to another component. Also, maybe there is another one that is here. So right now I'm going to select all the bridge right? components. Here. Finally, let's see, I have another HP component here that I'm going to move here. I have the DDR, right? Uh, let me delete all the empty components. So delete empty components. Right, so I have some left fan components so I need to and 
add an alt business for this one. And again, when we delete some empty components, and at the end, I'm going to select the flashes, right, and move the component flash. And I have here a bridge. Here, so everything looks good. Component. Yeah, we have four and then four outside. Right, and great. Did you know I? Has different components. Maybe what I'm going to do is put it outside, right? Here. Yeah. So I have my geometry prepared, right? Uh, at least in the in the component structure uh, tree, right? So what I'm going to do is I only want to see the case. So I will I will triple click on the case to select everything and basically hide others right so i have this guy here so the first thing that i'm going to do is to remove this bar that is here maybe I, I am not interested on this so for doing that i am going to use the split tool i right? then select it and i'm going to split it with this and now i remove this bar okay and maybe the other the other thing that I want to do is probably if I want to to work with the pin se separate separately, right? Then I can split geometry again. This and now I have multiple bodies. You see now here that multiple bodies were created. So if I look here, so basically let me try to shift. One okay, perfect. So I'm going to hide this right and I'm going to select all of this right and I'm going to move to a new component. I'm going to call pins right now. This guy's will be called change the name to pin. Of all the pins here, right? And in my case, bar, I only have this guy and this other guy, right? So if I want to hide the pins, this is what I have so far. Also, I can, for example, look at these hollows and I can say, hey, you know, I am not interested in these hollows. So I can select them. I can use the selections to use the equal radius. I then you see that three the three holes are selected and I can use the fill tool to, to fill this right and also the same for the other ones so fill tool and that's it. right so I have simplified the geometry at this point so another thing that we can do right now is to try to to start like creating ice pack entities, right? And for doing that, what I am going to do is to go to to workbench here in this bar and we have this ice pack um, box, so we can we can start to build some some nice features, right? So let's create some openings. So what I am going to do is to click here in opening, right? And maybe what I'm going to do is to select uh, this one, maybe here, maybe I may want this, but first I want to hide this guy. Right, let me hide this. I'm going to select everything, and then you can see that I've selected all these surfaces. 
and I'm going to here to open it, right? So it seems that we have the, we have all this all these openings created. So here, okay, and I have multiple openings created, right? They are based on these surfaces. That's great, right? So next step, we, we already have openings, right? So the other steps that we, you may want to do is basically do this. Let me show you what we can do is I already have the openings here, right? So I want to delete this slot. So I'm going to select all of this item. I'm going to select this again, right? And select it, all right? And I'm going to use this tool here, the fill, right? So now I don't have any slots anymore into the, the domain, but I have the, all of these, all the openings here. They are here. So I, I will show you what we are going to do to, to describe the domain, right? So this is the first step. So the second step is I will again to, we hide this one. So we have this part of the case. Let me again just find this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is to to create an enclosure based on this on this geometry, right? So I will go back to the workbench tab. So oh, I will basically I will click here in enclosure. And with the enclosure, what I'm going to do is to select this guy here, right? And you can see that now we have a new, a new, basically a new casing enclosure, right? Then this is something that we just did. Correct. And also we are going to do the same for the, this one, let me just right here. Let's get this. I will say enclosure. I'm going to do this. And now we have two enclosures. Okay. So this is the first part of what we are doing. Okay. So we have so far our enclosure created and also our opening. So we can click here. I can see what we have so far. Right. So something that we can do. To, to look this better, right? So maybe from here to the design, okay. I some, have some alternative here, right? So we may want to maybe we can use a Right, so we can see that we also have the the openings. Right. So now what we are going to do is to identify the we're going to identify the the ice pad openings. Right. So for doing that, what we are going to do is again going to lower branch identify objects. Right. So let me select everything. Select everything here. Right. So I'm going to identify isolate objects. So identify objects. So we say, hey, there are six uh, objects. So I'm going to say yes. Now you can see that some of the objects here change because now they are transformed as uh, or are now treated as ice pack objects. Okay. So now what I'm going to, to tell is A, 
What about showing me a uh, non ice pad? Non ice pad. Oh. oh, so I click here. I can see that I have multiple non ice pad options, right? So, how do we deal with this, right? So, basically, it's easy. Let's start with the with a nice but simplicity, right? So if I select, for example, this, uh, there is a nice but simplicity. Like this, right? Here, here, and for sure, we can we can select all of these. Things, select them, right? And we can apply all the, all the simplicity, right? But let's forget about the things at this moment. I want to focus on the other, other parts, right? And let me just, you can see I can, I can transfer everything, right? So I can just suppress for physics in any case that I, I don't, this is if I don't want to move this to iPad, right? So here, I then, I have basically, let me show again, non ice pack. Why, but I don't want to. Right here, so let me see. Uh, this guy, I then apply simplicity. Also, and back. Right here is already converted, right? So we will this transfer. Have this other one. Perfect. This and we have this and this. Right. So if I show non ice pack bodies and I have hide the pins, so we only have the heat sink and we have only the fans. So let's start with the with the heat sink, right? So what we are going to do is to try to simplify this guy. So I'm going to select ice ice pack simplifier. I'm going to select that. And something that I can see here is that the model was split in many, many, many blocks, right? But I don't want that. So if you look the extrusion or the direction of, of the main direction of extrusion of the sink is the X axis. So I'm going to select X axis. I'm going to click again. And you can see that now, let me change my display. Right now the block is full, right? And now if you look here, the heat sink is also a nice pack object. This is nice, right? So we already transferred the heat sink to an ice pack object. And basically the other thing that we want to do is to transfer or yeah, to, to, to change this fans model into ice pack models. So if I go to workbench, if I click the fans, so basically select this face. I select this face and now I have a fan model. The same with this, the same with this, and now I have an ice pack fan model, right? You can see that. So my model is basically done. Everything is ice pack objects. And that's what I have so far. So right now, basically what I'm going to do is to launch the, the ADT. ADT, uh, IcePack ADT, and the link is basically to IcePack ADT. So let's do that.
in the electronic desktop. So what I did was to open uh, a space claim session, right? Uh, I'm sorry, an ice pack session. So inside ice pack, so what I want to do is to connect to a space claim. So for doing that, I will go here to model and connect to a space claim. And it recognizes the session of the space claim that I have open. So it's not connected, so I will select it and click connect, right? So you, it, is, it is importing the space clip files into ice pack. So let's wait for some minutes, okay? And now here we have our ice pack model, right? With you know, uh, that comes from a space claim, right? For sure that the model can be, we can do some changes and some simplifications to keep, you know, working on it. But in the meantime, this is the, this is like a summary of different things that we can, we can do, okay? So now we have a geometry, right? But the geometry needs more work and I don't want to spend too much time before going into the mesh part that is also important. So, but I believe with this information, you have uh, the basic information to, to start to work with the space claim and to try to, to simplify complex geometry.